Okay, so now for alcohol and carboxylic acid, these are the things you need to know. Again, it's the same thing where structure, properties, water reaction, and use. So structure, properties, reaction, uses. So for alcohol, right? Alcohols are basically your homologous series but that are having the hydroxide, a hydroxyl family group, functional group. Hydroxyl, if you can see, is very familiar to you. Right? It reminds you of your hydroxide group, uh, hydroxide in your alkalis. Okay, but um, over here we manage it differently because this OH tends to be very very stable. So even you put alcohol in water, uh, because you cannot release the hydro the OH functional group, right? Therefore, it is not an alkaline. It's not a base. It it, it will it will be attached together with the organic compound. The formula for the general formula for your alcohol right is actually CnH2n plus 1 OH where n represents the number of uh, carbon atoms and that over here one difference that you have from alcohol with your alkenes and alkenes it has this particular uh, element addition which is the oxygen so when we actually compare it right in terms of naming it again follows the similar naming of the me pro but so N E P D, which tells you the number of carbon atoms it contains. Okay, so me. Then when you want to look at the functional group into which it actually uh, experience have, it will be the one behind. Okay. So in terms of uh, molecular formula, it will have the O H. Whereas for structural formula, it will be something like this, which is very very long. Now for the full structural formula, uh, what it does is, is drawn in this way but one crucial um, mistake that a lot of students tend to draw is they forget this particular single bond. So in exam they ask for full structural formula, you are required to even show every single line whereas a lot of students tend to take a shortcut they just write like this. Huh? Okay, so this is wrong. Huh? Then all these are linear chain um, hydrocarbons for the alcohol now we look at the properties for alcohol right they tend to be very vol they tend to be volatile liquids at room temperature and pressure volatile means that they can actually become gas very easily something like your perfume where you spray already uh, then it will be gas and then it can actually move everywhere from a liquid form so that's and this happens at room temperature so being volatile liquids your boiling point is actually very low okay so you can see that they are all in a liquid state in terms of solubility in table uh, in water their solubility actually reduces down the food uh, why? Uh, this is because as you go longer right your chain as you grow longer what happens is this actually becomes hydrophobic hydrophobic means that they don't like water Okay, and that's why they tend to be insoluble in water when you add more and more hydrocarbon groups. That's why you see for your alkenes and alkenes, they tend not to be soluble in water because they lack this particular functional group. This functional group is the one that gives it the property to be able to dissolve in water. Okay. And then the boiling point would also increase down the group. Why? Because larger molecule, you have more spaces for intermolecular forces of attraction. It takes more heat energy to overcome. So as the molecular size increase, the solubility decrease due to the additional chain of hydrophobic groups. Okay. So, so next is the boiling point will increase and because having a larger molecule uh, from initial like this, right, the space of it having an intermolecular force of attraction is just this much. However, if you have a very long chain, you could see that the, the amount of extra forces of attraction between molecules is a lot more. Therefore, it helps to increase the number of uh, the, the range of the boiling point. So what are some of the reactions alcohol can undergo? Definitely combustion, where combustion actually burns in excess oxygen okay, to form carbon dioxide and water vapor. So do take note the water vapor here, right? We are looking at it uh, in the gaseous form. 
okay on the other hand that this reaction is highly exothermic exothermic meaning it releases heat energy to the surrounding and definitely it produce a lot of heat so imagine any form of like um, your uh, petroleum bomb uh, same thing uh, you throw your explode <laughs> so same react same same kind of reaction then next we look at oxidation so oxidation on the other hand is whereby you are able to actually use uh, oxidizing agent to give it more oxygen so what happens is your alcohol when it undergoes oxidation you will actually form your carboxylic acid and water so if you want to make acid right and this carboxylic acid is actually a very weak form of acid and due to it being a very weak form of acid it will actually be able to um, I think, um, not be useful to carry out very strong vigorous acid base reaction but then if you need some acid this can be one of them lah. and this is how we are able to convert alcohol to carboxylic acid so when we look at um, alkanes uh, alkenes can we form carboxylic acid yes we can so for alkenes right to form until carboxylic acid alkenes you need to react with water to form your alcohol then your alcohol you add so this is step one the step two is you use the alcohol you add in oxygen from oxidizing agent or use an oxidizing agent then you'll form your carboxylic acid this is a two-step process okay so again the reaction you just have to balance it so usually what you do is alcohol reacts with oxygen to form carbon dioxide water then you slowly add in the coefficient to balance up okay so one way to actually for police to actually use um, the application of this conversion right is you because in your breath you will contain vapors of alcohol so what you do is when you blow into a breathalyzer the breathalyzer contains actually an oxidizing agent most of probably is acidified potassium magnet this potassium acidified potassium magnet will then break uh, will convert this alcohol into a weak acid and then the weak acid can then be tested either through a litmus paper or some unit or some indicator and then from there you could actually detect whether you contain any form of alcohol you drank any form of alcohol because your soft drinks all this they don't really undergo any form of oxidation to form the kind of reaction so just now we saw how we can actually produce uh, alcohol from hey, produce carboxylic acid from alcohol so how do we produce the alcohol if you want to do it just now I say already we can actually produce it from your alkene by undergoing the catalytic reaction at the addition reaction of adding steam what are the condition high temperature 300 degrees celsius and 60 atmospheric pressure with this catalyst h3po4 these together will then be able to produce ethanol if you don't want ethanol you want propanol then you use propanine okay so producing ethanol another way is by fermentation this one we will use yeast so what happens is you have glucose which is usually sugar you put it in the absence of oxygen through the absence of oxygen what will happen is you will then be able to uh, allow it to undergo some form of alcohol fermentation such that the microorganism your yeast right, will start to break it down because it actually contains um, the enzyme carbohydrates hey, I'm not sorry it doesn't contain uh, carbohydrates it actually will be either able to undergo anaerobic respiration it's a type of alcohol fermentation in order to actually form your ethanol and also to release carbon dioxide yes. okay then of course you you ferment it so this is one way in which how people actually create like wine and beer uh, for this condition because yeast is actually a living organism what you want to do is to prepare it at 37 degrees celsius at 37 degrees celsius right is the normal temperature or the most optimum temperature for yeast to survive and to actually do the conversion for you 
Hey, this is how you go about doing it, where you just have the mixture and you use and then you extract it out. But why do we have this lime water here? This lime water is to actually test whether the reaction is uh, react is undergoing because it produces carbon dioxide, therefore it will uh, form a white precipitate over here. Okay. Using a dilute solution of ethanol, um, a higher alcohol content is not produced as it causes the yeast to die. So sometimes if you are greedy, you want to put very high concentration. Uh, you can also you can also kill the uh, you will you will also kill off the yeast lah. Like for example, you let it run. Then as you produce more ethanol, 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 right? Eventually, the ethanol will kill off the yeast. Because et ethanol, if you if you see your, some of your hand sanitizer, right? They are actually very good in killing bacteria okay, at high concentration. Uh. So the ethanol can be extracted by using fractional distillation. Uh. And this allows for higher concentration of alcoholic beverages or pure ethanol to be produced. Okay, how are we able to prepare it in the lab? Same thing. Uh. But we just have to ensure that there is actually the absence of oxygen. Therefore, you need a stopper. Okay? And if the temperature is raised beyond 37 degrees Celsius, the enzymes will actually get denatured and therefore everything will stop. <coughs> okay. Following this, what happens when alcoholic drinks are left exposed to air? So alcoholic drinks when left exposed to air, air is able to oxidize the alcoholic drink. So it tends to actually uh, make it even, uh, of course there's bacteria lah make it into an acid, that's why the uh, alcohol right, will actually become very sour taste due to this uh, presence of oxidation and this is why fermentation of carbohydrates tend to take place only in the absence of oxygen that's why in wine brewery or wine fruit uh, or the fermenter right, they actually try to remove the, ox the oxygen gas inside the fermenter for it to react so sometimes if, let's say you are drunk or what right and you want to feel less drunk uh, you can there is actually you can take yeast uh, a bit of yeast uh. this yeast will then break down the alcohol in your stomach forming carbon dioxide gas so you burp a lot but you will break down the alcohol so you won't really feel that drunk but besides you do it on your own yeast uh, because uh, you are inserting bacteria into your body okay uh, then next we will talk about using